What do you lean on? Not talking about that kind of lean. I'm talking about where you put your confidence to get you through the day. Maybe you like to lean on getting all the right answers. A plus. Or maybe you lean on running the fastest or getting picked first in PE. You might lean on being able to make people laugh. What's the best way to throw a birthday party on Mars? You plan it. <laughs> maybe you even lean on getting a new pair of shoes or the latest gaming system to make you feel good. None of those are bad things, but if you put your confidence in them, they're going to slide. Just like that shelf. You'll mess up on a test. Sprain an ankle. Discover someone's laughing at you instead of at your jokes. And that brand new gaming system? It might pick up your spirits for a day or two, but after that, it's nothing special anymore. There's only one safe place to put your confidence. God made you. God loves you. And you were designed to lean on God. Even when your day doesn't go the way you hoped, God doesn't change. When you have to wait, God is still there. And when you're worried or anxious, God still has a plan. God can be trusted over and over again. When you ask God each day to guide your steps and trust God to give you the strength and confidence, others can see that peace and freedom that comes with it. They can see God at work in you. That's why trust is such an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about trust, while we also take a look at a story of a couple who may win the award for the oldest new parents ever. Oh, and wait for this. Wait for it. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And this week, we're talking about trust, which is putting your confidence on someone you can depend on. But how do you know who you can depend on? Mmm, well, I think the best way is to look up. What do you see? The ceiling? <laughs> no, imagine that we're outside. Oh, oh, uh, the clouds. Okay, imagine that we're outside and it's nighttime. Oh, uh, all the stars. Yeah. All those points of light way out into space. Constellations and galaxies, each one filled with more brilliant burning stars than we can imagine. And every single one points to God. I mean, God made all that out of nothing. It definitely makes me want to trust God. How many stars are there in the universe? 200 billion trillion stars. Whoa. Yeah. The sky was so amazing last night. I just have to take a picture for you. Look. Ooh, you have seriously got to upgrade. I know, I just couldn't capture it. So I looked up some pictures taken by the Hubble telescope instead. The Hubble Space Telescope has been orbiting the Earth for more than 30 years. It's about the size of a school bus and travels at 17,000 miles an hour, circling the Earth every 97 minutes. Check out this image from the Hubble. Whoa. This is the Prawn Nebula. It is 6,000 light years away. Stars are actually formed there, so the Prawn Nebula is like a nursery for baby stars. Mind blown. Whoa, wait, 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 I know this one. It's the, uh, the Veil Nebula. It's a leftover from a supernova that exploded like 20,000 years ago. Yeah, and check that one out. All oh, those look like Christmas lights. Well, the red dots are actually dying stars called red dwarfs. And the bluish dots are burnt out stars called white dwarfs. And they are all part of this huge cluster of stars called the Omega Centauri. Oh, I, I know him. He's a transformer. I think we're talking about something different. Ah. Oh, is that it? I want to see more stars. Well, that's all I've got. Unless. What? We can make our very own stars right here in the lab. I'm ready. I don't think you're gonna need those. They're for style. Okay then, let's make it. Follow along and you can do this at home if you like. What have we got, Zeke? Step one, fill a big jar or vase or tank about two thirds full of water. Step two, pour oil into a small bowl. Or two, or three. Step three, add four or five drops of food coloring to the oil. You can use up to three colors. Step four, whisk the food coloring with the oil. It's a little latte, a really oily latte. <laughs> okay, pour. Wait for it. Whoa, <gasps> our very own shooting stars. Oh, can we see that again? Oil is less dense than water and floats on top. Food coloring is water-based and mixes with water. Once the oil is added to water, the heavier food coloring sinks down. As soon as they hit the water, they dissolve, forming tiny shooting stars. Oh, let's do it again. We've got tons of food coloring. I'd love to make stars all day, but we got a story to tell, and stars are a big part of this one. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. God made our amazing world, but sin entered the world. People turned away from God and went their own way. 
So God picked one man, a guy named Abraham. And even though Abraham was like 90 years old and had no kids, God told him to look up. God promised Abraham he'd have more kids than stars in the sky. Yeah, and the whole entire world will be blessed through Abraham's family. But Abraham and his wife, Sarah, they waited for years and years, and they still didn't have kids. Which is where our story starts. <laughs> We're ready. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. It's amazing how all of creation can talk to us about God. You know, after God told Abraham that he and Sarah would have more kids than there are stars, I bet they went outside at night a lot more. More children than all those stars? Are you sure that's what God said? He promised. He said, we'll have a son. God's promise was clear, but Abraham and Sarah spent years staring up at those stars, waiting and wondering. They were both old, like old enough to be great grandparents. Could they really have a brand new baby at their age? But at last, one day when Abraham was 99 years old, God met with him again. It was the very hottest part of the day, and Abraham was sitting in the shade of his tent when he saw three strangers approaching. Abraham knew right away they were visitors from heaven. He went to greet them and bowed low to show them honor. My Lord, if you are pleased with me, don't pass me by. Let me get some water so you can wash your feet and rest under this tree. L let me get you some food to give you strength and then you can go on your way. All right, do as you say. Now making a fancy meal back then was a lot more than just heating something up in the microwave. Abraham found Sarah in the tent and asked her to bake bread. And then he picked the best calf from his herd and asked a servant to prepare it. Here is some stew and a fresh loaf. My wife makes the best bread in the whole land. <laughs> Where is your wife, Sarah? Over there in the tent. Now, you had better bet that Sarah was listening in on this conversation. I mean, here are three strangers out of nowhere who Abraham believes are from God. I mean, she definitely wanted to know what was up. I will surely return to you about this time next year. Your wife, Sarah, will have a son. <laughs> now? After all this time? I I'm worn out, and my husband is old. Can I really know the joy of having a baby? The Lord knew exactly what Sarah thought and said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Is anything too hard for me? I will return to you at the appointed time next year. Sarah will have a son. I didn't laugh. Yes, you laughed. Oof, Sarah seriously got called out there, but God wasn't angry with her. God was gracious to Sarah, and Sarah did become pregnant, and after some time, she gave birth to a baby boy. God has given me laughter! Actually, everyone who hears about this is going to laugh along with us. I'm so old, but here I am taking care of a baby. What should we name him? What about Isaac? <laughs> of course, Isaac! You're going to have a big family, little one. As many as there are stars in the sky. The end. So, do you know what the name Isaac means? What? One who laughs. Well, that is spot on. Can you imagine how it felt for Abraham and Sarah to wait all those years? I have a hard time just waiting for the microwave popcorn to finish. <laughs> I know, right? Waiting can be hard. But here's the awesome thing. God is always trustworthy. God promised Abraham that the whole world would be blessed through his family. And it took hundreds of years, but the whole world was and is blessed because of one of Abraham's descendants. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, Jesus. You got it. You can trust God all the time, especially when you're having to wait. Thanks, Brian. So what is our part in the story? Well, maybe you're having to wait for a broken arm or a sprained ankle to heal. You can trust that God is still with you, and God still loves you. And you can ask for God for the patience to keep waiting. 
I remember when I had to wait forever when my mom said she'd get me my phone. I guess I could have trusted God more instead of just asking her, can I have my phone yet? 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 Okay, yeah, we, I... we get it. <laughs> Sorry. I actually had to trust God yesterday. My dad promised to play tennis with me after he got home from work, but then he had a video call that took over an hour. I had to trust God to give me a good attitude. Yeah, you know, the truth is, we're gonna have to wait for things. Sometimes we'll have to wait on God. But even while you're waiting, you can trust that God is still there and that God still cares about you. Got it? Got it. Wait for it. So, here's the thing. Trust God even when you have to wait. Yep, I can't wait for tonight when I get to see the actual stars. I mean, I, I can wait, but you get it. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Here's something to check out while you wait. <laughs>